Okay, this is problem 50. Elemental analysis of a compound reveals that it is 18.9% sodium, 28.7% chlorine, and 52.5% uh, uh, oxygen by mass. Um, and I'm giving, I'm going to provide you in problems like this with certain atomic masses. I'm using a simplified atomic masses to make the calculation something that's doable within the time frame of the test. Okay? And so, uh, now, the first part of the question is what is the empirical formula for the compound? And the next part of the question is the molecular weight is determined to be 122.44 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula? So first, to answer the part A, what is empirical formula? Why? Is, what does empirical mean? What? Um, no. Uh, uh, what is empirical? Emp empiricism. What is empirical? Experimental. Yeah. Yeah. So it's based on an experiment, empirical, and the empirical formula turns out to have a meaning that that is a compound meaning. Uh, so, first and foremost, it reflects something that is found experimentally. This is the way the data actually shows up. You get some sort of, uh, 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 this is empirical data. But also empirical formula corresponds to the, what's the other, uh, when I'm talking about empirical formula for a compound, it's going to be the type of formula that's going to be the, has what type of, uh, 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 subscripts in it. It's going to be the simplest. Okay. It's the simplest. It's got the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound, in a particular molecule. This is in contrast to the molecular formula. The molecular formula corresponds to the actual molecular formula. And so that is not necessarily going to be the empirical formula. The, the simplest whole number ratio is the empirical formula. And that, that one is what we find experimentally with data like this. And then the molecular formula is the one that what the actual molecule was, the actual formula. And it's always going to be some integer multiple of empirical formula units. Okay? So what we do in order to solve these problems. Anybody know what, what do we always assume? Because you're given, if I'm given something in mass, uh, 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 mass percent, percent by mass, what is percent again? What's the definition of percent? Parts per hundred. So what is a good safe starting point with this type of a problem? You assume what? in order to simplify this calculation a great deal. Parts per hundred. What, does, what would I assume? Assume... 100 gram sample. That makes life so much easier. Uh, 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 that was a question somebody had before we started. They said, well, you didn't state it was a 100 gram sample. We always assume that whenever you have a... Uh, in order to, this again is a simplification. This makes the problem soluble. It makes it simple. Okay? And I'll go for all the simplification I can get. And so, uh, whenever you see percent, percent corresponds to parts per hundred, that simplification should leap out at you. Okay, so I'm going to assume a hundred gram sample, and then what I want to do over here on the left hand side is that means I'm going to have 18.9 grams of sodium. And now I want to go from grams of sodium. I'm going to cast it into some form that's going to be useful in the molecular formula. What would be useful? Moles. And there is one mole of sodium 
and I provided you with, what was it? I said sodium is going to be 23 grams of sodium. And I'm also going to assume uh, uh, 28.7 grams of chlorine and one mole of chlorine is, how uh, would I say, 35 grams? And last but not least, 52.5 of oxygen and one mole of oxygen is 16 grams of oxygen. Okay, notice I set all these up over here to the left before I started playing with it. I'm going to want to get moles of each here and then we'll simplify it a little further over here. And I don't know if it's regrettable or not. I think it's a good idea to have some numbers like this. You get to divide by and multiply by. Gives you some practice with your long division. And I do this, been doing this for years. And you guys, I've got, I've got the advantage of, I've got a room full of people. You're going to bust me if I make a mistake. And uh, uh, so that's going to make life easier for all of us. Unfortunately, you're not going to have that on the test. But, uh, but if you practice with your long division, it will come. So what I'm about to do is scratch paper, okay? So this over here is my scratch paper. And I've got to divide 18.9 by 23. Okay? And so... That's going to be zero point, okay, now 23 is going to go into 180, roughly about how many times? What would you figure? Your first guess. Eight? That looks good to me. Let's see what that gives us. So eight, eight times three is uh, uh, 24. Eight times two is 16. And two is 18. Wow. Uh, uh, um. So, uh, uh, okay, now um, 9 by 4 is 5. Uh, that would be 50. 23 goes into 50 how many times? Yes. Okay, that would be now 46. And that's going to be 40. Eight, two, one. That's as far as you need to carry it. So I'll call that. Now back on the page, I go 0 0.821 moles of soap. Now I'm going to do the same type of on my scratch paper. A simple long division. And uh, 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 now I've got to divide 28.7 by 35. Okay. Okay, in other words, I'm going to have another one of these, which is going to be 0 point something. Uh, 287 by 35. Let's try 8 again, see what happens. 8. Eight times five is uh, forty. Eight times three is twenty-four, and four is twenty-eight. Okay, so I have seventy. Oh wow, thirty-five goes into that perfectly. Eight two, and then seventy. Wow, so that's going to be equal to uh, uh, zero point eight two moles of chlorine. And now, erase my scratch paper, and 16 is going to go into 52. Um, okay, how many times? Uh, uh, 16 goes into, 16 times 2 is what? 32. 32 and 16 is 48, so it would be three times. 
and that's 48, and that's 40, so that would be two times, right? Uh, 2 times 16 is 32, and that's 8, uh, 0. Okay, uh, 16 is going to go into 80. Isn't it 52 and a half times? Is it 52.5? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, my apologies for that. Um, uh, uh, it was 52.5? Yeah. Ah, 0.5, thank you. So that would be 45, and still it's going to be, uh, uh, it's still not going to change my, uh, okay, 32, 5, minus 2 is 30, uh, uh, and 4 minus was 13, so that would be 130. Yes, thank you very much. Who was it who gave me that correction? See, I have the advantage here. You guys don't have that advantage. i got a room full of people that are going to keep me honest. But you also get to learn a valuable lesson, and I, get, I love to point this out. You're not going to, any of you, get very far in this life listening to a liar like me without questioning everything I say. And so it's good that you learn it now. Because like, or another way of stating that, there is no scientific authority vested in any individual. There is... As a scientist, I can only stand on the, my first principles and my logic. My logic is sound, my first principles are sound, and what I say is valid on that basis, for that criteria. So you should be critical of everything, and mostly, in particular, what I say. But, and the hardest thing, what I'm trying to train you guys to do, is do that same thing to yourself. Everything you read, everything you hear, period. And everything you yourself do. Because it's the hardest thing to spot your own mistakes. Okay. So uh, this is going to be 16 goes into 130 about how many times? Eight. Eight? So eight times six? 128. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So this will be, this should be adequate. Uh, that turns out to be 3.28 moles of oxygen. Now we have enough information here to write the uh, unreduced empirical formulas. And the unreduced empirical formula, I'm going to use all the symbols. I'll start with uh, the most metallic on the left hand side, which is be the sodium. And then I will, uh, uh, actually I'm going to put the oxygen last. So it's going to be Sodium, uh, 0 0.821, chlorine, uh, 0 0.821, and oxygen, 3.28. That is the unreduced empirical formula. Well, we, but we now can simplify. How do I simplify this? I divide by the smallest number here. And the smallest number in this case turned out to be the same number for both of these, uh, 0 0.821. So, there's no one on chlorine. It's only okay, but yeah, okay, okay, 8.20. But uh, I'm going to divide by 8.82. Okay? And, and it's going to be so 0 0.82. 0 0.82 and 0 0.82. It's going to be, what's it going to be for this? And this is going to be 1 as well. That difference between 1 and uh, uh, here is, is, is negligible. That's experimental certainty. Okay. Okay, now um, what I'm going to have to do on my scratch paper is 3.28 divided by uh, uh, 0 0.82, so I move the decimal point over 2, and then I end up with 82 is going to go into uh, uh, 328 about how many times? About four times. So four, 
and four goes into four times two is eight. Four times eight is thirty-two. Wow, goes up, perks up perfectly. So that it turns out to be uh, 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 therefore. The empirical form is going to be what? Okay. That is my empirical formula. And um, now I get, I erase my scratch paper. Um, just for fun, before I go on to finish this, we want to find the empirical formula weight. Um, which I can find in this step or this step, depending on which, uh, where you like to put it. Um, what's the name of that? Sodium what? Chlorate. What kind of chlorate? Sodium perchlorate. Remember our nomenclature from earlier? So sodium per that turns out to be a sodium perchlorate, but we don't know if that's actually what it is. That's just the empirical formula that corresponds to sodium perchlorate. Now, the empirical formula weight, how do I find the empirical formula weight? What? Multiply times the atomic masses. So the uh, empirical formula weight, uh, EFW is equal to, I'm going to have, one sodium, which is 23 plus 35 plus 4 times 16. 4 times 16 is what? 64. So 64 um, over my scratch paper, 64 and 35 and uh, 23. 4 and 3 is 7 and 5 is uh, 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 12. 64 is 10 is 12. 122 equals 122 grams per mole. Which you can write that on this step or I can write it on the next step. I like to do it here so I've got a complete data set to go on to the next part. But you could do this. Uh, uh, you don't, you know, I don't need to see that part of the calculation. You can simply state that. Yes? Where do you get 4? Like, what if you got like 4.4 or something? 4.4, well, then you'd have to multiply everything times 2 till it became, it became a whole number. And, that was and if it, but if it's like, if it was like 0.04 or something like that, uh, th then we're just going to round. So, you know, there, th that, that's a judgment call, but I will give you ones that it's going to be pretty clear. There may be a little off, like, oh, yeah, it's, it's 0.999. Okay, it's 1. That, if it's something like 0.4, well, that's weird. You'd have to multiply by whatever number necessary to bring that to a whole number ratio. That does arise, but uh, I'm going to give you questions that you can solve within the time frame allowed. And there's how many questions on this test? 55 questions. So, uh, we're gonna, you know, I'm going for setting features. Okay, now. The molecular weight of the compound is found to be 122.44 grams per mole. There's your point. Uh, uh, this is going to be, what is the molecular formula? Well, the molecular formula is going to be equal to, so uh, 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 the molecular weight is equal to empirical formula weight times N, and therefore N equals which is equal to 122.44 grams per mole divided by 122.44 grams per mole, or 122 grams per mole equals what? One. Therefore, formula is N-A-C-L-O. 
in this case it turned out that way. That's not always going to be the case. So what I would do is if it was I would have to multiply times n everything in it in order to get that to match. Okay? Are there any questions about this particular problem? Guaranteed it's on the test. Not this problem, but something like it. Any questions? Yes? So if it wasn't one, you go back to the EFW and times it by? Yeah, it, whatever n turned out to be. Let's say it was two. Then the formula would have been Na2Cl2O8. You multiply it by each of the subscripts. Does that make sense? Okay. Everybody clear on that? That's a good question. Any other questions? Yes? Oh, you're just scratching? Okay. I could dig it. You're wearing a sweater, it looks like, on a hot day like this. I could dig it, too. We start early. Um, any other questions? So that's a wrap on that one.